Last night around 10 o'clock, we got toned out for a reported vehicle fire in the Midas parking lot. I had gotten home, I think, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes beforehand. I was just getting ready to head up to sleep. I made my way down here to the firehouse. When I got here, uh, the officers put me in 3512, which is our first two apparatus. A couple blocks from Midas, you could start to see an orange glow reflecting off uh, the buildings and other vehicles that were passing. And then once we got close, you could see the uh, tow truck was pretty much fully involved in the passenger compartment and it, uh, also in the engine compartment. Well, I was coming down off the highway here off of 33 and I smelled a little bit of diesel fuel, didn't think anything of it. Came in here to drop the car, walked down to the flames shooting out from underneath the truck. Called you guys up, they got out here pretty quick. Okay, what's left of it? I was more worried about them getting here fast enough for the customer's car. Yeah, I didn't want to see the customer have the problems I'm having right now. We were there really fast, like I said, we, we saved the car on the back of the rollback with very minimal damage. 911 number 22, where is your emergency? Uh, 55 Blue Mountain Village. And what's your name? My name's Tom. Okay, Tom, what's the emergency there? My neighbor's house is on fire. Okay, you actually see flames from there? Yes, yes, there's flames okay. coming out of their house. Are you, is anybody in the house right now? No, no, they both got out with their dog. Everybody's out, okay, get everybody away from the structure. I'm sending the police and fire department for you, okay? When we first got on scene, we initially had problems with radio communications finding out who was going to be the first engine in because when we were en route they were calling for the first engine in to hit a water supply so we didn't know if we were first engine in or not because we couldn't get on the radio for communications because it just was chaos are we hooked in The B side of the building was actually pretty much burned open. So we were attacking through the front door of the A side of the building, and then we went to the B side of the building, and we were trying to suppress the fire from the exterior, basically. And then the back side of the building, we were coming into the back door, trying to, to push the fire back to the original you know, burn point. From the start of the fire, we were pushing fire from the center of the house back out to where it originally had started. When we went through the door, I mean, it was, it was dark. It was smoky, and we did a right-hand search, fell out the door, knowing that we had to go to the left because that's where the fire was. And we gained access to the door, and it, it was it was dark. So we just started working our way towards the orange glow, and then once we started flowing water and got the smoke out of the out of the room, more or less, started ventilation. That's when we realized that the kitchen was on fire all around us, which was pretty intense. We were trying to figure out where the uh, fire was in the cock loft and we were just ripping down walls left and right and me and Patrick were going around to the front side of the house and he just grabbed me by the shoulder and he said there was no floor there, which I couldn't tell because it was just all full of black smoke. I would just put my foot out a little bit and there was nothing there. It was a very tough fire to fight because it was a modular home and it had like a foot of open area that was in the top of it that had insulation and all kinds of stuff and then once it burned in into that area it made it hard to get it we had to basically rip the whole ceiling and everything down to get that area because once it extended into the the roof rafters in the area in between the roof rafters it was it wasn't through the top and it wasn't through the bottom it was burning in between so we had to pull everything apart and pretty much gut the whole inside to clean it up so we could get make sure we had the fire spread the hole on the end of the building was the Blue Ridge's assistant chief was looking to see if we could get into that open void that was in there through the end of the building. Because if we could open it up and get into that void, you could do your fire suppression through that hole that we were cutting to make sure that all the fire was out. But when we opened it up, it wound up that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't into that, that crawl space, that open space area that we were looking for. So it didn't really help us out on that end. But normally you would cut a hole like that to get ventilation and to get into an area if you can't get to it with, you know, without cutting a hole through the roof or cutting through the ceiling. He didn't want to go um, come see me in rehab because he wanted to go back in, but he had already went through a, a cylinder and he needed to come in because he was over his 20 minutes. 
many firemen don't want to stop for rehab. They just want to go, go, go until uh, it hits them hard and then they're down. Sometimes you just got to stop them and say, listen, you're here. We need to take care of you first. Your health is more important. You're watching Fully Involved, the series. On the next episode, Fully Involved, the series, all new action. Meow? Yep. Me and my buddy, his name is Jim, we're on the hazmat team, let's let it begin. That's pretty weak. Well, what can you come up with? I'm not even going to bother. <laughs>